How's it going everybody and welcome to the second episode in the series of videos on how to make your very own Minecraft plugin. In this video we're going to be taking a look at creating custom commands. So here we are in a blank plugin project and I've already converted this to Kotlin. So if you need to know how to do any of that, you can watch the first episode in the series, which I'll link to right up here on the top right. But the first thing that we're going to do, just like before, is we're going to make our plugin send a message in the console when it loads and unloads. So we can do logger.info and then uh, custom commands as loaded. And then we can just copy this and paste it down here and change this to unloaded. So now that we have that, we can start creating our commands. In this video, we're going to create a command called slash jump. And when you run that command, it will launch you up into the air. So the very first thing we're going to do is right click here, create a new package and call it commands. And here's where we put all of our custom commands. Then we can right click on that package and do new Kotlin class file. And we can call this the name of our command. So it's called jump command. So once this is created, we have to make this implement command executor. So we can do that by doing colon and then command executor. And you want to make sure that you're using this one here. So now you'll see you'll get a red underline under here. And this is because when you implement this command executor, it must override a certain function. So if we hover over here, it'll say implement members. And this is an IntelliJ tool that will, if we click on this, we can now see all of the missing functions that need to be implemented. So for IntelliJ, we can just click on this and click OK, and it will implement our function down here. But you could also just type this out, but you'd need to make sure that all of your parameters are correct. So we can just remove this to do here because we're about to implement it. And we can also just put here a return false because this must return a boolean. So now we want to put all of our command logic inside of this on command function. So this will be called every time we run our slash jump command. Now we haven't actually registered the command yet, so we would not, if we built this and put it into our project right now, it would not do anything. We would not have a slash jump command, but we'll do that in a second. The first thing we're going to do is implement the logic for our jump command. So in here, we're just going to say if sender, and you can see the sender is a parameter that this uh, on command takes. So we can do if sender is player because a sender can be a server console as well. And obviously we don't want to make a server console jump that will cause errors. But we can do if sender is player and this basically says if this sender, this command sender is an instance of player. But now that we know that the command sender is a player, say let's let's say we want to check if they're off. But you can only use this command if you're an off. So we can do if sender and here's where Kotlin is quite cool. See now that we've done this check up here and says if sender is player, anytime we reference sender in anything inside this this check it will automatically cast sender to player so we can use the player methods without casting it manually and casting just means you're taking a variable of a certain type and saying we want to use this variable as this other type of variable and that might be a bit confusing but trust me it'll all make sense in a little bit we're gonna do if sender dot is off right here and then we can just open parentheses and let's say if the sender's not off we want to send them a message saying hey you can't run this command so let's do else and then we can do sender dot send message and we can use the components we learned about in the last video so we can do component and we want to make sure it's this one dot text we can pass in let's say uh you do not have permission to use this command and let's also make this red so we can do uh, color and then text color this one dot color and then red is 255 0 0 okay so now if the sender is off we want to make them jump in the air so first thing let's do is send them a message saying that the command was successful so let's do sender dot send message and again let's use a component dot text and let's say you have sorry, Successfully jumped. And let's do dot color, text color, 
dot color and then for green let's do 0 255 0 and this is kind of a nasty green color so let's add a 75 to the blue here just to make it a bit nicer now we can actually launch the sender so we can do sender dot velocity right here equals sender dot velocity dot add then we have to pass in a vector so vector we're gonna do vector and then for a vector we need three ints three doubles or three floats so we're gonna do zero on the x-axis and then 10 on the y-axis because that's the direction we want to jump and then zero on the z-axis the x-axis is side to side the z-axis is forward and backward and the y-axis is up and down so what we're saying is we're saying the center's velocity is going to be equal to their current velocity plus this vector here so we're just adding 10 to their upward velocity which will make them fly into the air so that is all we need for the logic of our command and we can come back here to our custom commands main class and let's declare a new function and let's call this register commands and before we do that but before we put anything in here we're going to actually add our command to the plugin.yml and we need this to happen otherwise our command will not be recognized by the server we're going to come under resources open the plugin.yml and we're going to go down a line and type commands and then put a colon and then hit enter and now we're going to type our command so jump and then another colon and then under that we're going to put a description so we can just say launches the player in the air so now we can go back to our custom commands main class and let's make sure that we call this register commands from our on enable so register commands and then in this register commands function we can do get command and then we have to pass in the name of our command so we have to make sure that this is the same as what we put in here because this is what it's getting and we can do jump we want to make sure that's exactly the same then we can do dot set executor and then we'll pass in an instance of jump command i actually called this jump commands plural by accident so this is a good example of where you'd want to use intellij's refactor tool so you can just double click on your thing that you want to refactor want to right click then we can go down here to refactor and then rename and you can just rename it and it'll rename it everywhere so it won't cause any errors so i can just rename it to jump command because that's what it should be and you'll see we actually get a little red line here and this is because in kotlin you're not allowed to call this set executor function because it's a possibility that this get command might return null there's two options here we could either put double exclamation marks and this says this will never be null and if it is null it will throw an error or we can go for the second option and put a question mark and what that will say is that if this part of the line is null don't continue to this if that's null it won't finish it and it won't throw an error now we're going to use that in this case um, but we know that this is never going to be null because we set it right here so this would be null for instance if you put jump here and there's no jump in this commands list in the plugin.yml and again this has a yellow underline because it can be private so let's just do that private on the bottom we just say registered commands like that okay so this should be all we need to create our custom command so now let's build our project and now that this is done we can expand our target directory and we can scroll down and grab our custom commands jar and we can come to our server and paste it in the plugins folder and we can start up our server so now over here on the server we can make sure our plugin is loaded by doing slash pl there it is custom commands and now we can try it out so let's do slash jump and there we go it says you've successfully jumped and it launches us in the air so that's pretty cool but before we move on let's test uh if we're not off that we can de-op ourselves so now let's try the command slash jump and it says you do not have permission to use this command and it doesn't do anything which is great because that's exactly what we programmed it to do so that's pretty cool but you might ask what if i wanted to make it so that that command could target anybody because right now it only targets the player 
that is using the command. And in order to do that, we're going to come back over to our jump command, and we can close this plugin.yml. And you'll see we have this string array up here called args, and this is the key to doing that. We're going to create a new if statement and say if args at zero. And actually, let's let's make this a bit cleaner because right now we have a whole bunch of nested if statements and those are not good in programming so i'm going to comment out this whole thing and we're going to rewrite it to look a bit cleaner so there's a much better way of doing this so we can do, first thing we can do is we can do if sender not is and this little exclamation mark in programming means not so we can do if not is if sender not is player then just return false and this means that it will stop the function right here so if the sender is not a player then it will just stop the code right here and it won't execute anything else in this function. Then the next line, we can say if sender is dot is off. We actually want to check if they're not off. So again, we're going to add this little not sign in the front of our expression. We can say, we can actually open, because we want to send them a message. So we can open curly brackets and then we can put this message. We can just copy this message from down here into there. And then in Kotlin, if you're writing code on multiple lines, you don't have to put a semicolon. But if you want to write multiple lines of code on the same physical line, you can just put a semicolon. So we're going to do that. And then here we're just going to do return false. Oops. Turn false. And that line's a little bit long, but that's all right. Uh, and then we can now say, because we want to add all of these checks for our arguments, we want to say if args at zero. So this is saying in this args array, the value at the index of zero so how this works is if you were to type game mode game mode is the command and then creative that's the argument you could have a whole bunch of those so creative is argument zero and then you could have uh so a player name so creative ominous and that would be creative would be argument zero and ominous would be argument one then you could use as many arguments as you like but in this one we're just going to create a argument for the player if args at zero dot is null or empty so if it is null or empty we just want to return false intellij is actually telling us that there's a better way to do this so we can do this change call to is empty so we can do that instead this is going to have a red underline because of the same thing as before we can see this question mark up here which means that this is nullable which basically means that it's possible that these arguments don't exist but because we're checking that here i think we can just remove this and now it will not ask us because we are checking here if it is null or empty already so we don't need to do that up there so we can just return it if it is null or empty and actually that is all the checks we need for right now let's do the same code as before we can do this let's bring this up here this is not actually going to target the player who we passed in in the arg zero so let's change that let's create a variable so val player equals actually that's a bit confusing let's call this target player the val target player equals bucket dot get player and then we can do args at zero and here's a useful little trick so if we run to it's possible that this variable is null because it's possible that this player doesn't exist the player who's run the command has entered a bunch of random garbage and the player that they're trying to target doesn't exist in that case this variable will be null so we could go down a line and type if target player equals null then return false and we could do that but there's actually a cool little trick in kotlin and intellij is actually telling us to do this here but we can just delete that and if we want to return out of a function if a variable is null we can do question mark colon return false and what that will do is say if this is null just stop don't go any further so we probably want to make it send the player a message if the target player is null so this is a cool trick but it won't actually work here because we need to do something else we can do if target player equals null we can do uh, sender dot send message component dot text and then just say that player 
does not exist. Let me just do color text. Oops, text color. Not color two fifty five zero zero for red. And then we also just want to remember to return false. And then we just want to change all of these to target player, which we've already done. So we can actually remove this commented code, but it's just kind of as a comparison. This is what we had before, and this is what we have now. And you can see this is much cleaner up here. So let's delete these comments. And now we should have our code targeting the player we put in args zero rather than just the sender. So let's build that and test it. And you could put absolutely anything in that args variable. It doesn't have to be a player. You could have a number or a location or whatever the heck you wanted. You could put in the args. But for us, for this command, we're going to be using a target player because that's the most common use for the arguments. Okay, so now this is built. We can open this and put it on our server. And now that we're back on our server with our plugin reloaded, we can just again make sure that our plugin is there. And yep, it is. And then we can use our command. So the first thing we're gonna do is slash jump. And it's actually gonna throw an error. And we'll look at this in a second. Before we do that, we're gonna test it when we actually specify a player. So let's do jump and then ominous. And you'll see it has jumped. Now I've targeted myself here, but you could also target any other existing player and it would do the same thing. But let's go take a look at that error. So over here on the console, we can see that it has thrown a null error. And let's just find out where that is. So it says executing command jumped in plugin. Uh, but let's find out where in the plugin. So plugin command dot Java 47, that's not useful. But if we do a little bit of looking around here, we can find here it is. Uh, jump command at line 17. So let's go look at what we're doing on line, se line 17. So in jump command on line 17, right here. So we're checking if the args are empty. And I think the reason this is throwing a null reference is because in order to check if the args are empty, we actually have to have args. So let's go a line above that. Do if args dot is empty, then return false. And that should fix it. So let's try that out. And for the third time back on the server, let's try our jump command now with no arguments and see if we get an error. And we don't. So that's great. We fixed that. And I didn't actually know that that error was going to happen, but I'll probably leave it in the video because uh, it's useful to know how to debug errors because they happen quite often. And debugging is probably one of the most useful skills you can have in programming. So now we've done that, we have pretty much the structure to create any command we want. And obviously this one is quite a basic command, but it's still pretty cool. And this might be useful on like a mini game server or something, but that is the basic logic for creating any command you want. And that is very, very powerful because it can be used in much more complex situations. And also commands and events are kind of the basis of Minecraft plugins. So that is pretty cool. Uh, I hope this video helped you. I hope you found it interesting. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.